Hi everyone, Corey here from Tales from a Polk County Girl. And in this video, I'm going to take you through my work planner. And surprise, surprise, it's a flex binder. For those of you that are new to my channel, um, I have an entire playlist dedicated to flex binders. I love flex binders. They're my go-to a binder for anything like for when I need to make my own planner because the binder that I don't like any of the binders that are out there and I'm trying to fix my cover real quick so like I cut down a two inch ringed flex binder to make my own planner I cut another one down but that had smaller rings to make a B-Flex style binder to travel with. So I love me a flex binder. I really do. If they ever go away, I will probably cry. But that's also why I hoard them. Like I find them on clearance and like when they're on clearance for like three or four dollars post um, school supply season, I just grab them all and I have a stack. I really do. My husband laughs at me. Anyways, um, my work flex. I said it's my work planner. It's not really my work planner. It's more like my, it's my work flex that contains a whole bunch of information. I can see the light reflecting on it about projects I'm doing at work and how I keep them all organized. So that's what I'm going to show you. Um, the first section I've just turned a pay, turn the a contract around you don't need to see that I have a pocket divider followed by some notebook paper for when if I if I'm in a meeting and I need to take notes I'll take I'll take it in here and then I've got three of their like protector sheet tabs if you know about the flex binder you know what these are and that's for quick things if I need to separate stuff. And then we get to the meat of this book. Um, I have a page protector with my table of contents and it's numbered one through 12 because I have the one through 12 dividers. And this is just how I kind of keep up with what's in each section. I actually, right before Thanksgiving break, I sat down and went through this thing and cleaned it out, redistributed some things, because I had projects with displays, with programs, and all sorts. Everything was kerfuffled together. And things that were messy and needed to be rewritten, y'all know how that is. So my first ta so my first section is my master task list, and yes, it does that is exactly what it sounds like um there's nothing on here that yeah um where i write down stuff i want to work on i'm way behind in reading some professional journals so i need to catch up on that and one thing i did start doing and if you have um a master task list as well and then information about said task in another spot like um, my number nine tab is all of my display ideas for um, my job um, and I write down oh I need to make a display for on elections and how voting works in this country and all the notes about that are in tab nine so I write down the task and then if it's already in a specific tab, I write down what number tab that is. So I know I can reference the information there. My second tab is, uh, tab number two is I call it Project Stew because this is where all of my big projects that I'm working on um, go. And some of them are some may never come to fruition it's just i thought it would be fun to do and other one like uh if anybody else works in a library and you've heard of the core list the rcl core list and you've run that against your collection yeah i'm working on that too 
it's this this thing is never ending like i'll get through one part of it and it's like oh crap now i gotta go do this other part or i need to fix some yeah um and all my projects um within the tab itself they're not um they're not uh organized by uh, which one I'm working on at the moment, they're actually in alphabetical order. So, so this one, so this one was the core list. My next one is March Madness because one of my coworkers sets up a fantasy football thing every fall. I want to do March Madness. So, I've got notes about needing to do March Madness. Then after that is. NaNoWriMo. We just got through NaNoWriMo. Actually, we didn't get through it. NaNoWriMo just ended. Uh, NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month. It usually occurs in the month of November. And I had wanted to do something with it. Um, a colleague of mine at another mm -hmm. school, she, uh, she and I had been kind of collaborating. She tells me what she's been doing. It sounded fun. I wanted to do it at my library. I didn't do it. <laughs> it's just been crazy. Um, my third tab, and I have to consult my table of contents because I don't know what anything is. Um, meeting notes for various um, things going on right now, like we're implementing a new library management system and notes on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any notes from any librarian meetings, professional technical meeting, all that so I can reference those, and I'm not gonna show you those notes. Um, section four, I have this list, I printed it off, called the Classical Authors List, where, and usually one of my display ideas is I do, at the beginning of the month, I do author birthdays. So any author born in like the month of December, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's dry. Any author born in the month of December, I have a list of, you know, by date and whose birthday it is. And then I go pull what books of theirs we have in the collection and I do a little book display. So I've been meeting, been working on it for a while. It just, it gets, you know, okay, I'm a librarian. Uh, I'm an academic librarian. Student needs and student help comes first for me. So if that means we've got three classes in the library and I've got to go out and help students, well, throw this away and go help students. And so that's why a lot of my projects I haven't been, made a lot of progress on because it's, if we get a little busy. So, and any librarian will tell you that. We all have our our busy seasons and we've actually just gotten through ours uh, for the semester so I, I just need to sit down maybe I could hand that out to an OPS worker have them turn all this into an Excel for me I might do that delegation right delegation all right the next thing is our collection development policy for um, our college and some other stuff in here that I can't really show you because um, I don't have people's permission to flash their names on the internet. Uh, tab six was a uh, was an assignment from my boss of hey, can you figure out how to do a flowchart for buying stuff because unfortunately we need a flowchart. So I started sketching one out and. I'm the type of person where I got to get all the questions correct first before I actually start trying to make it look like a flowchart. I'm better off with something like this. I can understand this, but there are other people in my department that are more visual and they need shapes and arrows. We're working on it. And I've made a lot of progress on that one too, which is nice. All right, where'd my table of contents go? So number seven, conference presentation ideas. Um, the colleague I spoke about earlier 
who I do, who I collaborate with NaNoWriMo stuff with, we are putting in to do a presentation at FLA, hopefully in the spring. We will find out sometime this month if our presentation idea got accepted. So we don't know yet, but this is where um, she and I are, according to an, my my coworker who has also met her, uh, he's like, you two are the same person. You really are. You're the same person. Um, <laughs> and my husband and her partner say the same thing. It's like, oh my God, they're the same. And yet the world does not implode when we are together. So when I say, when I have a section for conference presentation ideas, it's more of what can my colleague and I present at a conference together? What will be fun for us? So that's kind of a, it, it's my fun section. It's my, oh yeah, we can do that. Let's try to do that. Okay. Um, section A is, I've been tasked with organizing and um, figuring out what to do with the archives. Um, for the longest time, the, the library had a certain amount of the archives. We had um, older yearbooks, older bound poetry that the college had done back in the 70s and the 80s and all that. And what we call special collections, which is older books, rare books that have to either do with the college, with something in the state of Florida that we don't want anybody to just have access to. Um, like we have a first edition of Osceola the Seminole by Captain, and I can't think of his name, but it's a book, uh, the copyright, it's a first edition from 1883. We bought a paperback edition, a newer paperback edition, obviously, to go in the circulation collection. This particular one is going in special collections because it is falling apart and it is beyond my skill to fix it. So I have a whole section dedicated to getting the archives organized because when we packed up to renovate, I just threw stuff in boxes. I'm not gonna lie, I did. It's, hey, I need a box, threw stuff in the box. So now I'm going through and reorganizing everything. We're going through things and going, okay, is this um, like back files, like department back files and financial stuff of do we need to still keep this and that just got lumped in with the archives plus the president's office very generously dumped a whole bunch of stuff on us and said here take this do something with it so now I've got ephemera and and coffee cups and pens and from the years of my college you know look at all the crap we've bought with the college logo on it we're thinking about making a very weird uh, art display with it. We don't know yet. So that's section eight. <laughs> and it's coming along. It's slow and tedious as all big projects like that are. And we all are also hoping to digitize some of this stuff. And, um, that's a whole nother part of the project. So section nine, my display ideas. Um, this is how I try to keep my display ideas organized. And this is not a full, a complete list at all, but I've divided the square, um, a piece of paper into four squares each. And then I just go through and okay, what are the big things that can go on display in these months? Fall is our very busy, is our big season. As you can see, this has the most display ideas put in it at, than any of the others. And then I just have, uh, when I first became a librarian, I sat and mind mapped out some of the uh, display ideas I wanted to do. And this is the literal mind map that I made, that I sat at my desk and then went to my boss and said, pick one that you want me to do. I was just hoping to get one and she loved them all and she said, do them all. So slowly, very slowly, I've been working on getting it done. So 
and this is like um, a calendar of events, reminders to myself, you know, for Black History Month, I need to pull these lists are not complete. It's just as I think of things. So, you know, for Black History Month, I need to remember to pull um, all of our books by very prominent African Americans. Uh, something I really wanted to do is called, eventually is called the Collection Spotlight. We uh, use the Library of Congress classification system. And, um, you know, not many students, you know, they come from their schools where, the lower schools where um, they use Dewey. And they don't really understand the differences. And this, for me, would be a nice way to educate students about, well, you think um, all the education books would be an E, but no, they're an L. The only one that makes sense is music, because music is M. That's the only one that makes sense. But everything else, and they go, okay, well, where are your books on... Like, uh, a student wanted books the other day on Henry Ford. So I look up Henry Ford in the uh, catalog. And it depends on what you want. Do you want how he's contributed to American history? Uh, that's in C's, which C is auxiliary science. Do you want uh, business tactics and everything? That's in H's, which is business. Or do you want how he, um, you know, modified... And, um, you know, car making and everything. And, you know, if it's about cars, that's going to be in T for technology. Because that's where all of our car stuff is, too. So, I can't just tell the, and tell the student, oh, well, go to the nonfiction section and go to F for Ford. It's, no. and Or, I don't know how Dewey works. I mean, I know how Library of Congress works. I told the students, like, we're going to go to three different spots in the collection, and the student really couldn't wrap their head around that. But I personally love Library of Congress because it allows us to, um, we can get more specific with our, um, and expand our collection easier than you can with Dewey. Sorry, tangent. But, um, you know, you saw earlier about my election year display. You know, what, what's the type of stuff that uh, students need to be educated on when it's an election year? Because, let's face it, whatever side of the political spectrum you're, you were on, 2016, was nuts. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And we had a lot of students asking questions about voter rights and the Electoral College and all that. So... I think in 2020, I really want to make sure to have a, for starting with the fall semester, I can push a, an election based um, display to just educate students about why, sorry, why our voting system works the way it does. And because that's not taught in schools anymore, unfortunately, at least not in Florida. They don't teach that stuff. I can tell you, my government and economics class, I didn't learn that. I really didn't. I may have learned something about it in elementary school, but that was elementary school. <clears throat> so, yeah. And then I just have a list of, as you, and if you've been paying attention, everything's been in alphabetical order, of random display ideas that I will eventually work on so you know I like the idea we have an entrepreneur entrepreneur entrepreneurial certificate here at the college and I'm I'm starting to uh, make contact with a lot of our certificate and AS program directors to get information about you know what they do and um, how you know their resources because um, a lot of students don't know that they can just get an associate in science degree or a certificate in certain things and go straight to work. They think, oh, I have to go get my, my associate in arts, my AA, and then go get a bachelor's. It's, and not everybody 
needs to do that. That probably sounds very heretical coming from me, but I do believe that not everybody needs a college degree. You need a certificate or some training or something to be able to go get a job. Let's do that. Not everybody needs to go get a bachelor's degree. Okay? So, anyways, there, I said it. It's on the internet. Uh, in the last couple of sections, uh, oh, I do have stuff in here. Uh, section 10 is just um, <clears throat> notes on our interlibrary loan system. Wow, my throat is really scratchy. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> you know, just to remind myself. Wow. Okay. Just to remind myself what stuff in our collection we do send out in our library loan and what stuff we don't. The next section is, you know, I told you about that flow chart earlier for um, buying books. There's been a discussion of maybe doing a workshop for all the librarians to make sure we are all on the same page. And I have been tasked with coming up with that. So that's another... That's another fun thing that I'm working on and probably going to happen once we come back from winter break. And section 12 doesn't have anything behind it yet. So, and as projects get finished, I do take them out of here and make room for new projects. Everything goes on the master task list. My day-to-day -day operations vary depending on the amount of classes and the number of students we have needing help. But that is how I stay organized for work in a flex binder. You guys know I love the flex binder. I totally recommend if you can get some getting the 1 to 12 uh, dividers. Okay, so thank you very much. I will see you guys Later, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I, my phone's telling me that my camera's about to die. So, or my phone's about to die because the battery's almost dead. So, I gotta go. So, if you got any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.